Hello, Miss Stokes here. I'm going to show you how to make a spinach and feta tart. Firstly, I wanted to show you my two favourite cookery books, Mary Berry's Baking Bible and How to Bake by Poor Hollywood. I use these books to cook cakes and to make bread and pastry from, and they never fail the recipes. Very, very easy to use. A good book cookbook should look like this. The pages should be covered in the recipe. So if you licked that page, you'd be able to taste the recipe that you're about to make. I think it's partly because I'm just probably very messy but I've used these so much and I used to use them a lot for when I used to have my market store but I'm going to use poor Hollywood's shortcuts pastry um, recipe and I've added poppy seeds to it to give the recipe and the pastry a nice kind of rustic and nutty taste firstly you're going to make your shortcuts pastry so you'll need some plain flour unsalted butter eggs salt and some poppy seeds. So add your flour to the bowl and salt, a pinch of salt and your butter. And then you need to crumb this butter with the flour. So you rub it through your fingers, your thumb and your index finger and you can gradually create a breadcrumb type consistency. As you can see here, it gradually comes together, working out all the big chunks of butter until you've got a very crumbly, um, fine consistency. Then you need to add your wet ingredients, which are your two egg yolks. So you need to separate the white from the yolk. So you can just run that through your fingertips and put it into a bowl. Then you can add your poppy seeds and run these through the flour and mix them in so they're nice and combined. Add your egg yolks and you've got your water. So you need to just use a knife here because it's quite wet and it'll get stuck to your hands. So use the knife to kind of start to combine it and gradually add the water until it starts to form a ball and then you can use your hands to kind of bring it together at the end. Don't overwork your pastry because you'll end up with tough pastry and it won't be all lovely and crumbly. All you need to do is just bring it together in a nice ball. Cling film this and then put it into the fridge so the um, butter can become nice and hard again because it's got quite warm in your hands and this will be a better bake if you do this. So now you can roll out your pastry so flour the surface and then use a rolling pin to start rolling it out. I didn't have a rolling pin so I used my cling film roll but it worked quite effectively. Um, keep rotating your ball of dough and so you've got an even kind of thickness to your pastry. Um, make sure you've got things out of the way so you've got the space and start to create the shape you need for your um, tart base or tin that you're using. So I'm using a rectangular tin and I'm just making sure that it fits and because uh, I don't want to make it too thin the pastry or break and then I fold it over to hep it into my dish and then I can kind of squidge it into the corners and into the depth of my tin. Um, you can start to take the excess off the sides of the pastry. You can use a knife to do this if you want it really clean or you can just rip it off with your hands and keep it quite rustic. Use your excess pastry to plug up any holes in your dish and then you can prick with a fork the bottom of your dish to make sure that air circulates when it's in the oven and starting to bake and you'll need to put some grease proof in with some rice on top or kind of you might have some uh, baking beads to put on top to kind of weight that grease proof paper down so the pastry doesn't all puff up in the oven you keep it nice and flat. You'll need to put it in the oven for about 10 minutes just to harden off so you don't end up with a soggy bottom on uh, about 150 uh, degrees. Um, so you can just cook it so it's nice and solid so when you put the wet mixture in afterwards, your filling, you don't end up with a raw soggy bottom. So you're giving your pastry a chance to kind of just get going before you put all the wet stuff on top of it. So now I've got it out of the oven, so I remove my uh, rice and I start on my filling. So you'll need some feta cheese, ch cheddar cheese, an onion, some garlic, pepper, tomatoes and some eggs and a little bit of milk. So I start off by chopping an onion, um, just dicing it roughly, it doesn't really matter if it's neat or not. And then I dice up my garlic and then I'm going to kind of sweat these in a pan with the garlic and a little bit of butter so they're nice and soft and this is going to create a nice kind of base to the mixture that I'm going to put into my pie. 
Then I start to chop up my pepper. So this is kind of for decoration and a little bit of flavor on top. So I cut some nice little long lengths of pepper and any excess bits I'm just going to bung in. And then I chop up half some little cherry tomatoes for more decoration on top afterwards. So next I crack, crack my eggs and uh, this is for kind of the kind of eggy filling and then I whisk that up so it's nice and combined and then now I'm going to add my spinach and I use frozen spinach I just kind of defrost it it's really good it's just like normal spinach but it kind of it kind of creates a little bit more finer consistency then I crumble in the majority of my feta I leave some for topping afterwards I combine all that together with my egg and spinach I added another egg because I didn't think I had enough kind of wetness to my pie. You can do that. It's, there's no right or wrong here. Add as much cheese as you want, about 100 grams though. Add your onion and garlic and mix it all up. Add some salt and pepper for, to taste. So make sure it's got lots of lovely flavour. I also added a little bit of milk to make sure it was wet enough, my filling. And then I start to add it to my pastry dish. So I make sure it's nice and compact and spread it evenly all over the base of my pastry. Then after I've added all the filling, I start to add toppings to make it look beautiful. So I crumble lots of lovely feta on top. And then I start to add my pepper in a nice kind of arrangement and add my tomatoes as well. Um, don't forget to salt and pepper the top of your pie. Um, add as much pepper and tomatoes as you want. I quite like lots of it, so I add, you know, so it's nice and tasty. And then you're ready to put your pie in the oven. Put your pie in the oven on about 170 degrees and cook it for 40 minutes until the egg and the mixture is not gooey anymore and it's solid. And it should come out a little bit like this. This pie goes really lovely with lots of different salads or some sweet potatoes. You can do anything or a lovely dollop of coleslaw. It's a lovely thing to take on a picnic or to have as a family meal. So happy baking.